This bulletin proudly brought to you in association with Alex Campbell's menswear. Tonight on the South Today, a Dunedin-based Paralympian has been immortalised in the digital realm ahead of this year's Tokyo Games. Dunedin people living with Parkinson's disease are regaining some freedom of movement through dance. And we visit possibly the most environmentally aware school in the South. Kia ora, good evening, I'm Sophie Morris. Dunedin-based Paralympian Holly Robinson may not have won gold in Tokyo yet, but she's set to be immortalised as a character in the official video game of the Tokyo 2020 Paralympics. It's a first for Dunedin, for the athlete herself and for the city's centre of digital excellence. Dunedin Paralympian Holly Robinson is we're used to seeing her training for top flight competition. However, she's been cast amongst a host of other leading Paralympic competitors in the official video game of this year's Tokyo Olympic Games. So the Pegasus Dream Tour, I will be involved as an avatar in the game. So alongside some other incredible para-athletes, I'll be featured in there in my in-game avatar, which is really exciting. And it's been a really cool process getting to design my avatar and working alongside JP, JP Games and Code as well in designing that. The Pegasus Dream Tour is an animated video game being created in Japan by JP Games in collaboration with agencies around the world including Dunedin's CODE, or Centre of Digital Excellence. CODE Establishment Director Tim Ponting says when they were approached by JP, Holly's name leapt to mind. When the uh, opportunity arose to maybe look for a Paralympian to participate in the game, um, we did our research and um, Holly just sprung out as this incredible um, athlete and incredible um, kind of inspiration to us all that, that maybe we could, we could help facilitate her inclusion in the game. The game generates an advanced avatar named Mine, which pursues its dreams of becoming a para-athlete and is created based on the player's own face through a smartphone selfie. The project is a significant international collaboration for CODE and Dunedin Mayor Aaron Hawkins says it's also a big deal for the city. Uh, we're thrilled to be partnering with JP Games to bring the Pegasus Dream Tour uh, to a worldwide audience. Holly Robinson is the only New Zealand athlete featured in the online role-playing game and says it will do amazing things for para-sport. And it will also be great for young uh, kids and young teenagers here in Aotearoa to be part of a virtual Paralympic Games and experience what it's like uh, competing at those and competing in some of those sports. And I think that's really cool and it's really cool that we may get some people that have shied away from sport or have not been involved that may take up sport because of this game, which is really exciting. The game is due to launch on iOS and Android on June 24th. The Tokyo Paralympics are due to be held from August 24th to September the 5th. In Dunedin, the South today. Snow has fallen in parts of the South with strong winds and low temperatures making for a wintry start to the day. Snowfall prompted Met Service to issue ice or snow warnings for several highways earlier today, but by 9am conditions were easing and the forecaster lifted some advisories. The Milford Road or State Highway 94 was closed and not expected to reopen today. All other highways are open, but there are warnings in place for State Highway 85, Palmerston Kyburn, and State Highway 87, Outram Kyburn. There is snow on the Crown Range Road and chains must be carried. The Clutha District Council said there had been reports of logging trucks getting stuck in the snow and the Owaka Valley Road has been closed. High country areas in West Otago had some snow on the ground, but the roads were passable. Temperatures were below zero in some places this morning. Mid-Dome in Southland was at negative 6.5 degrees around 7.15 a.m. The Crown Range Road was negative 3.5 degrees and Dunedin Swampy Summit was negative 2.4. 
A Dunedin workshop is helping people with Parkinson's disease regain control of their bodies through dance. Each week around a dozen people move to the orchestral rhythm, rebuilding their strength and having fun. Recapturing a sense of grace. It's one of the many benefits given to those who took part in the In Motion Dancing with Parkinson's workshop yesterday. Organiser Lucy Marinkovic says through an orchestral score and low-impact dance moves, the weekly workshop helps people living with Parkinson's disease rebuild strength and regain control over their bodies. It's, uh, it's a dance class where we get to move in a different way and, uh, yeah, take them take people outside of the experience of living with Parkinson's into the experience of being a dancer and feeling the artistry of what it is to move and dance with live music. Marinkovic has designed the chair-based exercises specifically for people affected by Parkinson's disease, but says the dance classes are just like any other. Um, well, actually, it's not too dissimilar to any dance class that anybody would turn up to. So we focus on things like rhythm and musicality, strength, posture, um, agility, a bit of flexibility, balance. It's, yeah, it's a dance class, but the way that I uh, put the exercises together and the way I describe movement um, is what's really useful for people with Parkinson's. It means that they can access their body in a different way and recapture a sense of grace. She says the response to the workshop has been great, with a lot of people having fun. But I feel very um, fortunate in my life that I've been able to have this career in dance and in the arts. It's, you know, it's the joy of my life and it's really very special to be able to share that with other people who are finding it useful and fun and the ability to come together as a community and it is a specific community. Um, that we're dancing with here and it's addressing very symptom specific things for Parkinson's so there's a nice sense of camaraderie in the room and playfulness. Marinkovic hopes the workshop will grow in Dunedin and plans to set up a charitable trust. In Dunedin, the South Today. The Southern District Serious Crash Unit is getting a resource boost. At the moment, three serious crash unit investigators cover the entire lower half of the South Island and have 45 open investigations. Recently retired investigator Alistair Crossland says the South Island investigators were expected to cover too large of an area. He says investigators could be called out in the middle of the night to crashes hundreds of kilometres from where they are based. Acting Southern Road Policing Manager Senior Sergeant Greg Ballantyne says three staff are shadowing the three investigators to learn the role. He says how the resourcing will be formalised in the future was unclear. Senior Sergeant Ballantyne says the emphasis on increasing coverage for investigations is due to the higher number of serious and fatal crashes on Southern Roads. Cromwell Primary School is leading the way for environmental efforts. A ceremony was held at the school recently, acknowledging the work of its Enviro Schools team, which has finally hit gold. Hard work and determination has paid off for a group of budding environmentalists at Cromwell Primary School. The school's now the proud owner of a Green Gold Award, the pinnacle of the Enviro Schools Awards. It is, it is a big responsibility for our school because other schools will be looking up to us and following our lead. Principal Wendy Brooks is proud of the school's achievement, which has been 11 years in the making as it's moved through the ranks from bronze, which it achieved in 2014. Some of the school's Year 6 leaders are proud of their achievements. In 2016, Room 6 made this lovely poster about why worry about water. The projects include a vegetable garden, native plants to attract more bird life, recycling system, community pantry, composting and education around sustainability. The Green Gold Award recognises the many achievements and projects the EnviroSchools team have completed over the years. But it doesn't mean the hard work is over. Pupils are now working towards establishing a Junior Guardians of Lake Dunstan group. In Cromwell, the South Today. Still to come on the South today, Mahina Rugby Club celebrates 125 years and a former New Zealand and Australasian boxing champion shares a motivational message with youth in Rangiora.
episodes of Put Some Colour in Your Life are now screening on Channel 39. Take a look at Australian artists and the techniques they use in their studio. Put Some Colour in Your Life, Tuesdays, 7.30. Hi, Lindsay here from Alex Campbell Menswear. We've opened another pop-up store in Invercargill. It's for a limited time. We're in D Street, 201, right side the Lone Star. Come and check us out. We've got some fantastic deals for you. We've got moleskins. We've got every sort of shirt. Worn ones, work ones, business, merino knitwear, jeans, trousers, you name it. The list goes on. It's such a big deal. Come and see us. Alex Campbell Menswear. It fits. Alex Campbell Menswear. Pop-up store, D Street, Invercargill. A poorly maintained heat pump can lose up to 35% of its output. The Mr. Heat Pump Cleaner team are experts. Their specially developed chemical wash is totally biodegradable. Call Mr. Heat Pump Cleaner and get the job done by the professionals. skin cancer, you owe it to yourself to have a mole map. Mole map is coming to your area. Phone today to make an appointment. It could save your life. favourite babysitter, but it can be tough keeping up with what our tamariki are watching. Uh, luckily, the Broadcasting Standards Authority has made some smart changes to the classification labels. Ooh! Plus changes to the time of day certain rated shows will air and awesome new parental lock features, meaning your babysitter's job is safe. Find out more at safeviewing.co.nz. Welcome back. A mariner aboard a ship in Bluff is allowed to disembark after he returned a negative COVID swab and the Ministry of Health deemed his earlier positive test was the result of a historical infection. The Ministry of Health says the man had been at sea for 25 days. He took a test in order to disembark to receive medical treatment. Experts have assessed the level of risk to public health as being negligible. So the testing was undertaken to confirm the infection was historical. The Ministry of Health says a swab taken this afternoon has come back negative for COVID-19. Being now middle-aged didn't stop former players from Mahino Rugby Club getting back together for a celebratory match. The group got together to acknowledge the club's 121st anniversary. As part of the club's 125th Jubilee celebrations, 30 former Mahino rugby players competed in the Golden Oldies match against Oamaru's Excelsior. The game was part of the second day of the club's two-day celebrations, which were filled with a range of matches from Ripper Rugby and moving up the grades. Get busy is the message to young people from motivational speaker Billy Graham. The former New Zealand and Australasian boxing champion spoke at a fundraising breakfast in Rangiora, saying young people have much to offer if adults support them. After a year away due to COVID-19, the annual Big Brothers Big Sisters of North Canterbury fundraising breakfast 
packed out Rangiora's Baptist Church Hall recently. The guest speaker was motivational guru and former New Zealand and Australian boxing champion Billy Graham, who has started six academies around the country where success in boxing is not the main goal. The goal is not to make champions, it's to make champion young men. So the boxing just happens. If they're good, they stay. If they don't, they still stay because they've got friends there. So it's a good place to be. Graham grew up in a family of eight, living in a two-bedroom house. After constantly getting into trouble as a youngster, he was introduced to boxing by a police officer. And it was an experience that changed Graham's life. He estimates thousands of boys have now gone through his boxing program. We mentor all the kids, we try to change their direction, we get them so busy and they're training so much they haven't got time to get into trouble. You know, they've got programs, they've got to keep to them, you know. And any trouble, you know, they get threatened, they're going to leave, but they don't want to go, they want to stay there, you know, they love it. Now at 73 years of age, Graham has no intention of slowing down and credits his vitality to staying young at heart. <laughs> I'm always getting told to grow up, time to grow up, you know, I'm not in a hurry to do that. <laughs> and Graham's advice for young people is that they should watch and listen to absorb the lessons in life. Well, they've got enthusiasm, energy and experience from the past, from granddads and dads and uncles and that. If they've got their eyes open and their ears open, they can wiggle their ears and they're listeners. If you're a listener, you're on the journey. The breakfast event was made possible thanks to the generous support from local businesses and the community who donated food and catered the event. In Rangiora, The South Today. After the break on The South Today, redevelopment of the Lancaster Stadium in Christchurch is on track and we check out the weather. of developing melanoma skin cancer, you owe it to yourself to have a mole map. Mole map is coming to your area. Phone today to make an appointment. It could save your life. A poorly maintained heat pump can lose up to 35% of its output. The Mr. Heat Pump Cleaner team are experts. Their specially developed chemical wash is totally biodegradable. Call Mr. Heat Pump Cleaner and get the job done by the professionals. Hi, Lindsay here from Alex Campbell Menswear. We've opened another pop-up store in Ivercargill. It's for a limited time. We're in D Street, 201, right beside the Lone Star. Come and check us out. We've got some fantastic deals for you. We've got moleskins, we've got every sort of shirt, worn ones, work ones, business, merino knitwear, jeans, trousers, you name it, the list goes on. It's such a big deal. Come and see us. Alex Campbell Menswear, it fits. Alex Campbell Menswear, pop-up store, D Street, Invercargill. MTF Finance can help you turn the key on your next vehicle with a loan made just for you. TC's and lending criteria apply. Episodes of Put Some Colour in Your Life are now screening on Channel 39. Take a look at Australian artists and the techniques they use in their studio. Put Some Colour in Your Life, Tuesdays, 7.30. Welcome back. 
Christchurch residents will soon be able to revel in a new sports and green space as the redevelopment of the Lancaster Stadium is on track. Like many buildings, the stadium was demolished following the 2011 earthquakes and by summer residents will be returning to run around its fields. Christchurch's Lancaster Park redevelopment is ahead of schedule. That's the message from Christchurch City Council Head of Parks, Andrew Rutledge, who says the new sports and green space will be open to the public early next year. We'll be inviting the local community in particular to help us design the future, and there's funding in the draft long-term plan for that to occur over the next five to six years. We're pretty confident that in summer next year we'll be opening the park to the public, so you'll see beautiful green fields, some basic facilities, the heritage gates will be opened and um, the community will be using this park every day. The Lancaster Park Stadium was demolished due to earthquake damage and it's been no easy feat extracting the foundations with 40 tonnes of steel being removed each day. Rutledge says the space will have sports fields and a cricket block with the next five to six years focusing on what the community wants. And then the really exciting stuff starts here. People will get to use the park, understand it and then think about what's, what, what it looks like going forward, what they'd like to see, do they want playgrounds, do they want community facilities, all those sorts of things. In Christchurch, the South Today. And now recapping tonight's top stories on the South Today. Dunedin-based Paralympian has been immortalised in the digital realm ahead of this year's Tokyo Games. Dunedin people living with Parkinson's disease are regaining some freedom of movement through dance. And we visit possibly the most environmentally aware Enviro School in the South who have just achieved a high honour. And now for a look at what's happening in tomorrow's ADT. Welcome Craig. Good evening. Good evening. Um, some huge success for a Dunedin tech company today. A uh, business called Timely has uh, been sold to a US commerce platform. Now they're a bit, not saying exactly how much, but the word is it's in excess of $100 million. So some big bickies there. Um, it's, a, it's a company that produces cloud-based appointment management systems. Who would have thought there was such a thing? Um, it, it sort of works in the, in the beauty and wellness industries. So uh, pretty huge turnaround for it, really. It was uh, like, like so many businesses in COVID was wondering where its future lay. A lot of the, a lot of its customers obviously were shut down as well, so not a lot happening there, but they used the time wisely. Um, also tapped into the government wage subsidy as well um, to the tune of about half a million dollars um, and come out the other side and are quick to note that they are paying back the subsidy now that they've had success. So some great news for a Dunedin company there. Nice. Um, we, we've got more on the, the countdown stabbing of last week as well. Um, staff have asked the, uh, the company th throughout New Zealand to look at security in, this, in all of its stores in the wake of the incident. Um, union representatives uh, carried out a survey at the weekend with staff and 70% of them uh, say they've experienced aggressive behaviour from customers, um, which is a pretty staggering figure really when you think mm. about it. I mean, the job they're doing, um, and it's probably reflective of all supermarkets throughout New Zealand, so yeah, some big work to do on that, that area. Uh, our, our food pages, we talked to Nova Chef Kane Banbury, he's another one who's I guess benefited from COVID if there's such a thing. Um, Prior to that, he's working 80 hours a week in super, uh, sorry, in restaurants in Queenstown. Um, but with them closing down at COVID, he had a bit of a reset and uh, went to Otago Polytech, uh, the Cromwell campus, and studied horticulture and has now right. moved away there. He's back working in the, the same industry at Nova, but looking to produce uh, local produce, that type of thing for the business as well. So real, yes, yeah, making great waves. And just finally, a bit of a crisis in Dunedin Club Rugby at the moment. Um, lack of referees. Um, it's got to the stage that some referees are having to do two or three matches in a Saturday. Uh, four referees in 70 odd games that mean referees, so real shortage. Um, and it's getting to the stage where some grades may not end up with referees at all, that senior grades. So that's a, that's a bit of a concern. Um, they're asking clubs to try and nominate a player within the club who can maybe train and help out with some of the lower grades. But um, yeah, a bit of a worry. I mean, uh, I think we've all had a bit of a crack at referees from the sideline from time to time, but they do do a great job and, and, and need to be supported. So that's us. Alrighty, thank you, Craig. And now for a look at the weather. Tonight's weather proudly brought to you by MolMap. Beginning with a southern view, some of the light dusting of snow today.
Looking at the situation, very cold southwesterly airflow will warm a little tonight and early tomorrow as a warm front moves over southern districts from the Southern Ocean. Westerly airflow will continue for several days more. Starting off at the northwest of the South Island, rain and 14 degrees for Greymouth and Westport. Moving to the northeast, partial cloud for Nelson with 17 degrees and 18 degrees and sunshine in Blenheim. To Canterbury, partial cloud and 16 degrees for Kaikoura, Christchurch and Ashburton. To the southern towns, fresh westerlies, rain clearing and 11 degrees for the Catlins, Balclutha, Lumsden and Gore. To the Southern Lakes area, moderate southwesterlies and some cloud for most places with 12 degrees in Wanaka and Alexandra and 11 in Queenstown. Tiano can expect fresh westerlies, rain clearing and 10 degrees. To the northern towns, moderate southwesterlies for the area, Timaru can expect some cloud and 14 degrees, Oamaru showers clearing and 13. And inland, Twizel and Umarama should be fine with 13 degrees. In Dunedin, further wintry showers tonight with some sleet and strong to near gale south westerlies with an overnight low of 4. Rain tomorrow morning but becoming a little milder as cold south westerly winds ease. Rain clearing early afternoon but mostly cloudy. Moderate to fresh southwesterlies decreasing, a high of 12 and a low of 8. On Thursday it will be dry, cloudy at first, but some sunny periods developing during the day with moderate northerly winds, a high of 14 and a low of 7. And in Invercargill, wintry showers changing to rain tonight with strong, very cold southwesterlies decreasing and a low of 4 degrees. Rain at first tomorrow, clearing during the morning and temperatures becoming milder but remaining cloudy for the rest of the day. Fresh westerly winds, a high of 12 and a low of 8. Cloud increasing and showers developing again on Thursday with strong cool westerly winds, a high of 13 and a low of 6. That's all for our news this Tuesday. For the latest news from the southern region, head online to odt.co.nz or follow Channel 39 on Facebook and YouTube. Thanks for joining us. Ka kite anoa. This bulletin proudly brought to you in association with Alex Campbell's menswear. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air.